Hello, and welcome to the next edition of our six-minute support series video and podcast. My name is Seth LeBlond, and I'm the Assistive Technology Coordinator at the Foundation for Blind Children. Each week during the school year, we'll be releasing a video in which we attempt to explain a practical concept in assistive technology in six minutes or less. So buckle up and get ready for a wild ride, because here we go. This week, we're going to be talking about Braille screen input on iOS devices. Braille screen input is a wonderfully efficient way for Braille users to input text on iPhones, iPads, and iPod touches in a much quicker and more efficient way than they could with the regular on-screen keyboard. Even if your students have difficulty tactily discerning Braille for reading, if they learn to write Braille, they can make use of Braille screen input. They can use it for everything from text messaging, to creating notes, to managing emails, and much more. In order to start using Braille screen input, the first thing we need to do is open settings. Then we need to find our accessibility settings. Then we need to go to voiceover. And we need to find our rotor. Speech, braille, voiceover, verbosity, audio, commands, activity, rotor, button, braille screen input. Braille screen input is one of the rotor settings that we have access to. You might note on your device that it is not at the top. We can reorder it as I've done here if we want to. But the important thing is that we actually select it so that it is an available rotor feature. Now that it's selected, the next thing we want to do to set up a Braille screen input for the very first time is we want to go back and we want to go to our Braille settings. And we want to make sure that the Braille settings are as we want them. Braille input now is set to 6 dot Braille. And Braille input, that's Braille screen input, is set to contracted Braille, which is just the way I want it. You could set that to 6 dot as well if you want. Once we've set up our Braille screen input to be the contracted or uncontracted Braille that we want, we need to go to typing and we want to select typing feedback. Typing feedback allows us to define how characters are spoken as we enter them. We can select nothing for no keyboard echo, characters to hear each character as it's typed, words to hear words as we complete them, or both characters and words. I'm going to go ahead and set mine to characters for this demonstration. And we need right here under the Braille screen input heading is where we want to make the change. Now we have set up Braille screen input. It's just that easy. Once we set up Braille screen input, we can start using it. So I'm going to go ahead and open a notes file here. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how Braille screen input works. And now our text field is editing. Now that it's editing, we have our standard on-screen keyboard displayed on the screen. And I'm going to take two fingers and rotate them on the screen, like I'm turning a knob to activate the rotor. And I'm going to twist them until I get to Braille screen input. Braille screen in orientation log, landscape, screen away log, contracted. Now that tells me a few things about how my Braille screen input is set up. It's set up with, it's locked in screen away mode, which means I have to hold the phone with the home button to my right. If I have a device with no home button, we're talking about having the bottom of the device to the right. And when I hold it like that between my two palms, my left hand fingers are on dots one, two, three from top to bottom, and my right hand fingers are on dots four, five, six from top to bottom. 
So when I want to write Braille, this is what I do. When I'm finished with my input, all I need to do is do a two finger scrub. And I have my text in the text field, just as if I had entered it using the standard keyboard input. So it's very easy, it's very fast. I can type at about 30 words a minute using braille screen input, which makes it a much more effective input method for me. It allows me to manage emails and appointments and contacts and all sorts of other things when I am not sitting at a computer. It's, a, it's a, become an essential tool for me and it's actually been part of the iOS operating system since about 2014. So we've had it for a very long time, but it's still very underutilized and that's why we are giving you this tip today. That wraps up our six minute support series video and podcast for this week. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at sleblond, that's S L E B L O N D, at seeitourway.org, and I'll try to address them in a future presentation. For the Foundation for Blind Children, I'm Seth LeBlond.